Granby girl, identified as Patricia Tucker. Before I start this video, I just want to say thank you to all of you who have consistently commented on the videos here. It's the engagement that makes a huge difference, and the channel finally has 10,000 subscribers, which took about two years and 200 videos to reach, so I want to thank everybody. On November 15, 1978, a woman was found by loggers. They believed she'd been there three months to a year and was around 19 to 27 years old. A GSW was the cause. Genetic genealogy would eventually lead to a niece who would share that her aunt went missing in the 1970s, saying that when her aunt disappeared, she left behind two children. Those children were then approached by the genealogist asking for a sample and leading to a 100% chance of a parent-child match. Patricia Tucker's family finally knew the reason that then 28-year-old Patricia never returned for her kids. She couldn't. Patricia Tucker's story seems to be different depending on the account. Because there's so much coverage on this case, I dug deeper, but it differs where she was last seen by her son. And both can't be right. I'm going to give one account and then the other, because I don't want to get it wrong. Quite a few of these articles say that her son, Matthew, last remembers her dropping him off at some sort of a juvenile facility in Boston, Massachusetts. Matthew would reportedly tell authorities that the last memory he has of his mom is that she was in the front seat of a stranger's car and he had no idea who the man was. The year was 1978 and he was only five, so his memory is a little sketchy. He remembers the upholstery of the back seat where his legs didn't quite even stretch to the floor. We know that she was married to Gerald Coleman at the time in 1977 and that Gerald Coleman is considered a suspect. But he himself passed in 1996. One thing the article doesn't elaborate on is if Gerald Coleman, who would be the boy's stepfather, was someone the son knew. It almost sounds like it's someone else that was in the car with them. I would think if she was married for a year that the son would know and recognize Gerald Coleman. But of course, his age makes this really hard. It's so easy for a child to remember something wrong. So it is impossible, if not unlikely, that the man in the car wasn't Gerald Coleman in 1978. This is just my own guess, however. It's also very strange that she would drop him off at what was described as a home for juveniles, especially since he was age five. It makes no sense. Maybe things were different then than it would be later on, but the whole thing seems sketchy. Generally, such a place would be court-ordered, involving maybe juvenile delinquency. It bothered me enough that I looked into it, and I couldn't dig up a way for this to be true. Starting in the early 1990s, which is obviously a lot after this, but I did a lot of internships and worked as a program director at a youth mentoring agency, as I mentioned before, and then later in mental health. So my point is that I kind of know the system, and this doesn't make any sense at all. And then it said that the mom basically dropped him off at a park across the street from the place and left. Also doesn't make any sense. But her son would say that he remembers crossing the street to the playground and her telling him goodbye and right after that leaving. So perhaps she did leave him at a facility just hoping they would care for him. However, it kept bothering me, so I kept digging. And I found something different eventually. I found one article that would say that Patricia Ann Tucker married Gerald Jerry Coleman in 1977 in Middletown, Connecticut in April of 1978. And that the two would purchase a home in East Hampton, Connecticut. It would state that Matthew would say that Patty dropped him off for the last time at a home on Taylor Street in Chicopee, Massachusetts, which very much was not supposed to be some sort of juvenile home. This makes way more sense. The town he was dropped off in is about 10 miles away from East Hampton, where her home was. And in this accounting, he said he was dropped off in August of 1978 with a woman named Laura Holmes saying the woman was just supposed to watch him for a few hours, but that his mother never returned. Part of the problem, of course, is that this is 44 years ago, and why she left him or didn't return is lost to time. It's possible she left him on purpose thinking she was protecting him rather than abandoning him, or it's possible something happened to her at that same time. We know that Jerry Coleman was not a good guy. He was arrested in 1968 for attempted kidnapping, and was no stranger to the system, being arrested for R and A. 
His arrests are bad enough that I can't even state them because of YouTube's policies. He died in 1996, and for some reason, there is a photo of him taken in a post-mortem exam if anyone needs to know what he looked like and whether or not they remember something. I can't show the photo here. There's just no way to use it appropriately. But the photo's out there. I did find a booking photo from earlier in his life, and that photo can be seen here. We do know that Jerry didn't report his wife missing, and right now it appears he's the best suspect. Matthew would say the mystery of his mother's disappearance always bothered him, and his family members had a lot of theories. Some were far-fetched, like she had entered witness protection. It wasn't until his 30s that Matthew finally came to terms with the idea that his mom was no longer alive and that something had happened to her. Matthew attended the news conference where her identification was announced in March of 2023, saying, First, I would like to say thank you to everyone in trying to identify my mother and for wrapping your arms around her, especially the community of Granby. Thank you for never giving up on her. At least I have some answers now, after 44 years. It's a lot to process, but hopefully the closure can now begin. Thank you. He also mentioned that she had fallen in with a wrong crowd in another interview, saying that she wasn't a hiker, and where she was found made no sense. It appears he grew up with his father, who passed away in 2015. Matthew would say his father's passing left him feeling a little untethered, without living parents. He's now happily married and has kids himself. It's not clear what happened to Patty's other child. The DA would say at this time there is no probable cause to charge anyone with the demise of Patricia. The DA's office hopes to find more leads to help further the identification. Patricia Tucker went unidentified for 44 years. Had she lived, she would be 72 today. As always, thank you so much for watching. Please consider subscribing and hitting the bell so you don't miss new episodes. So if you enjoy the content here and you're not sure, take a peek to see if you're subscribed. Take care of yourselves and each other.